no one wants to hear about um, no one wants to hear about graphs. But um, okay, so we start by just reminding people. I think most people in here already sent me a, um, a draft of their poster. Um, it should be due right around now. Um, um, I think that's the time I put on there. So, so you should you should send me a draft of your poster, and then either I will give you some light comments back, and I'll trust you to you know be done with it, and then send it to Chris Coleman, and he'll print it, or I'll give you some comments, and I'll want to see another revision um, um, before I um, before I um, forward it to. Well, before I ask you to forward it, Chris, but um, I don't print it. Um, so I've, I looked at ones and I s replied to ones that were sent to me, I think, before about 4 p.m. today. And then I got a bunch of chapters. So you say after that, I haven't, I haven't um, sent back to you yet. We, they should be emailed to me, um, not to Ian. Um, and uh, the most common mistakes were. Um, Uh, the most common mistakes is you need a title. Um, you need your name on there. So this, this seems simple, but you know, a lot of people didn't put their the title or name on there. And um, and and often the font is too small. So and a combination when the font is too small. Um, you also tend to write in full sentences and in paragraphs, and um, you should do that, right? Um, you should write it in um, like these, in like it's better to write in bullets and use larger font. If, if you if you wrote with the font too small, you probably spent um, too long writing that too. So it would have been better if you'd written something shorter. It would take you less time. So so, so th these are the three main things. That was was the issue. Um, so, it, and again, the size should be two feet by um, three feet. This is smaller than you know. Typically, people print posters, but you know we're just doing for the class, so uh, this is a little, a little bit easier to print to do. Um, so, it, if you don't want us to print it or you don't get enough time, you can go print it larger at Kinko's yourself or. If you if you print out a bunch of slides, you have still have space for like something like um, three by four, right? But if you get if you want to do um, if you want to get have us to print it, then it should make it two feet by three feet. If you make it a different size, then we'll size it down to be that size. Um, okay. So any any other questions on the posters? Um, all right. So, uh, graphs. Okay, so, so, so we're back talking about graphs, and specifically, we'll be talking about um, um, communities and graphs, and uh, kind of the importance of nodes and kind of how this all um, ties together. So, um, so people, you know, uh, so so people started looking um, at at graphs kind of pretty seriously as a science in the 1950s or so. But this was not computer scientists. This was maybe uh, majorly people in sociology or um, psychology, and they were looking at you know patterns between people. Like uh, so, they would go to there were these examples where people would go to a high school. And they would get a set of relationships between people in high school. Um, one example, one you may have, I don't know if anyone did this in your high school, but a graph of who is who had been dating who throughout high school, right? You can you can see these graphs, right? Um, and so so, but these were generally on the scale of like hundred or two hundred people. And the, the reason they weren't 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 larger than this is they're actually hard to it's hard to gather this information. Um, and so, you know, um, so, 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 um, so, you know, starting in the 1950s, you had graphs, um, you know, of, of size, say, um, 200. Uh, 
so the size of the nodes was too high. Okay, and so um, there weren't uh, uh, there weren't too many edges, but you know there were cases where there were actually like, many many more edges that and, and it's it, there are a lot of things that weren't weren't clear. Um, so I'll um, I'll talk a little bit more about these, but um, so, so if you if you're writing the size of the edges as a function of the size of the vertices. Um, about what do you think this uh, on this function would be? Um, so um, there are other properties. The um, um, the diameter of the graph. Um, so so this is the um, longest, um, shortest path. Okay. So so if I Um, so what is the diameter of this graph? Right. So one, two, three, four, five. Right. So it's the shortest path between here and here is five. If there is, um, there are other paths. If you go through this, it's going to be shorter. It's going to be longer. But it's the shortest path, and this is out of. I mean, this shortest path is only one. Right. So it's the longest shortest path. It is the diameter. How does the diameter of the graph change as the graph gets bigger? As these properties, you know, what is a typical diameter of log graphs? Um, um, so, so you're saying like a path length of unit one that gets from one dot to the next dot? Yeah. So it's, it's the number of hops, the number of edges okay, you have right. to walk. So all the edges are equal. equal okay. Is it about half the size of the points you have for nodes? So if you have n nodes, you have about n by two as your diameter on average. Oh well, it could be. So, um, but this, so the it's, it's a horrible team. Um, the, the the thing is, when you're only able to collect graphs of size like 200, it's hard to answer these. What properties does the diameter of the graph usually have? Right. Um, so, um, so here's another more concrete question. I'll try and start with. Right. So let's say that. Um, you know, um, so this, um, um, so how do edges form? So, um, so this is more abstract, but let's, um, let me give an example. Say that there's a set of, of people and in some sort of group, okay? And these groups has some edges in them um, that's probably connected. Okay, and now, um, so this is a group C, and it's not necessarily a cluster, but let's say this is a group like a people in a church, right? So these are all the everyone in a church together. Or, or th these are the people who are um, part of some club, right? And now you have two people, um, Xavier and Yolanda, okay? Um, and um, Yolanda, is friends with three people in the, in the group. And Xavier is also friends with three people in the group. Okay? Now, Xavier's three friends aren't friends with each other. These people don't know each other. Um, Yolanda's <coughs> friends are um, all are friends with each other. Um, they all know each other. Who is more likely to join the group? Um, Yolanda. Um, so who thinks Yolanda? Who thinks Xavier? Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> so I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. What? Well, everyone needs to have an opinion for this one. Okay, so at, at least more than than five percent of the class needs it. Okay. Um, Okay, so so I'm gonna give. Okay, everyone needs to vote for one of them, and then we'll designate people from each side to give arguments, and then we'll vote again. Okay, so so everyone needs to vote. Don't worry, I'm not gonna. It's not a grade. 
who thinks Yolanda is more likely to jump? Okay, that's okay. Who thinks Xavier is more likely to jump? Okay, so I'd say I. I'm not gonna guess. I, I don't have the number. Let's say um, it was about three quarters Yolanda and one quarter Xavier. That's probably a good guess of how the voting was. Okay. Um, so, so who voted for Yolanda? So who wants to make a case why um, Yolanda would join? So I think Yolanda would join because she's connected with more influential people in her, her circle there. Well, closer to the middle of the group, but not as many edges. Okay, so she's closer to middle, um, more influential um, friends. Um, so I didn't say anything about the, the middle or the more influential, but I, I could have made like this friend of Xavier also be extremely influential as well. Right? And would that change how you thought about it? Maybe because Yolanda is in a clique. Um, Yolanda is in a clique. Okay, um, why would a clique be? She's not connected to the group. Okay, so, so there's like an argument of like, um, so, so you have a safety or security in that, um, so, so you have friends who trust each other, okay. Um, now, who who thought um, Xavier was more likely to jump? The thing is, the part Xavier is connected to is more dense, and the Yolanda is connected to a very sparse part. Uh, that's one triangle. And Xavier is connected to that whole chunk there, and it's spread out, and it's more dense there. Okay, so so I I I don't know if they're more dense or not. Okay. That, that wasn't that that might be the case here, but that wasn't the point. But. Okay. But the friends are more spread out. And so this argument is known as you know, independent um, support. So you have friends from, from, from many different places in the group. Anyone else want to make an argument for Xavier? That's the only argument I would make for. Okay, well. Um, so this is, so, so so in the, I don't know when it was, like before the internet and so forth, there were there were two separate views on this in the world of uh, on like psychology and sociology. And one group said it would be Xavier more likely to join because the friends are more spread out, there's, there's independent support, and this is kind of the main argument they used. Other people said it was um, Yolanda because there was this safety or security and that the friends she knew in the graph all kind of knew each other and that she would join a clique inside of the group. Um, and so, okay, so let's, now that, you know, these arguments are here, does anyone want to change their vote? Um, let's, do, um, let's do a quick vote again. So who thinks Xavier? And who thinks Yolanda? It looks like about, about the same, I guess. Uh, did anyone change their vote? Yeah. Uh, did you move to from Yolanda to Xavier? To Xavier. Okay. You change your vote because of the Monty Hall problem. So if you change your vote, you're more likely. Well, so I didn't. I didn't. Um, I didn't reveal a goat behind okay. any of the doors. Okay. Right. So if, if I told you that there was, you know, um, some some third case, okay. uh, um, I don't know the C name. Do you know a good C name? Z. 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 If I told you there was Z and two of his friends knew each other and the third didn't or something, but I don't know. Um, I know so the money hall problem doesn't apply. So, okay, so the, 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 once the internet came along and people could gather these large graphs, people realized that the answer was actually Yolanda. So, so three quarters of you um, got this right, but it, it, it could have been you had thought differently. This may be because of your experience if in, um, in actually joining different groups and social networks and, and stuff. People can look at 
these large graphs and see how, how people tend to jump. Um, so this phenomena is known as um, um, preferential um, attachment. And so it's often stated in a way that's slightly simpler that if you have, so if, if you're looking at a graph and, and you have, a, if you're looking to either join together this edge or, um, or this edge, you're more likely to form a triangle. So a, a triangle is exactly what you would think it is. It's, it's, it's a clique of size three. It's a group of three edges, three vertices that every pair has, has, a, um, has, a, has an edge between. Right, so, so if I added here, this would not form a triangle. So if you look at, if you look to forming an edge, and you have a friend in common, you're more likely to join. So if you look at how graphs grow over time, this edge is more likely to become uh, joined um, than this edge. And so by um, Yolanda joining this group, now Yolanda's already friends. Um, so this is a slightly different um, phenomenon going on here. But you know, essentially within this group, they would be forming um, three triangles where this would not, where Xavier would not be forming, um, would not be forming any triangles, right? So if 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 one of your friends joins some, so 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 here's maybe an example of why this would be true. Let's say there's a new social network, and you have you have three friends who who've joined this new social network. Now if they're all having a conversation with each other you're more likely to want to jump in and join that conversation. Whereas if you have three friends who don't know each other, they're having different conversations with, with, with different people. And maybe you're not as you know, in tune to that for any of those particular conversations as you are to the one with three of your friends all together. It's a lot easier to join into a subgroup. So th there really is, you're joining this club, not for everyone in it, but as a way to be, form a closer knit um, relationship here. And so there have been like lots of studies of um, so this um, this phenomenon of triangles. Um, so this is a clique of size three, um, and it is, so, that, so this has been kind of um, you know one of the fairly well documented things that actually happens in these in these large graphs. You do see all see a lot more triangles that you would expect at random. Um, and so certain people who, who, um, who, who have a lot of edges, so it's not, so to see how popular or important someone is, it's not just the number of edges they have, but it's how many triangles they have. People who don't have a lot of, say, triangles in their Facebook graph, aren't part of a lot of triangles, they tend to be uh, more depressed than people who, um, who do have a lot of triangles with the same number of friends. Um, so this, you know, th th this is kind of an interesting relationship that, that people have found. Um, so everyone knows what a clique in a graph is? So who doesn't know what a clique is? Okay. Uh, so, um, so a clique is a set of um, k vertices um, with edges between all pairs, right? So um, a clique of size one is just, every point is a clique of size one. A clique of size two is, is just an edge. A clique of size three is a triangle. So a geometric shape, close shapes. Well, no, like a clique of size four um, is this. If you can imagine four dimensions, this is a tetrahedron, right? You know, and then in, in size five, you're gonna get um, on this pentagon. Pentagram. Uh, one word. Um, pentagram. Good. Um, some of you know your pentagrams, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's a guy who, who came came here to visit a few weeks ago. He gave two talks on the same day. One was it was it was this mathematical talk I went to where he's talking all about pentagrams um, and properties they have in some mathematical context. And then he gave another talk about uh, where he was, he was debating, you know, in some debate where he was arguing on the, um, 
um, um, on the side of God for something. Right? So I thought that was kind of kind of a weird juxtaposition. Not that I'm I've no endorsement of either side or anything like that. So um, okay, so this so, oh, so this is a clique. So um, so you can you can keep going for higher for, for higher sizes. So like back in the fifties, yeah. Oh, there's a problem with this model in the sense of it, uh, whoever uh, comes first, right? whoever comes last is not really given too much importance. Once you establish a belief for yourself, you stay there. And second is, if uh, two people come at the model at the same time, and uh, you choose the tranquility for them, you don't really know which is better. Like, there's no quality associated with the team. Isn't it symmetric? Yeah, so th there's there's a lot of different studies, and I'll, I'll touch on these in a bit, of, of how do you model like the what what uh, on what graphs actually look like. And uh, like how do you model how they're how graphs are generated? And you know, the simplest way is you're just adding edges all at once, or either that or you add them incrementally. But really, edges come and, and edges uh, uh, will also sometimes disappear in a lot of situations, right? You can you can unfriend someone on Facebook. It's not as common as friending someone, uh, but you know, but uh, it's um, but you can uh, so and and in in reality, a lot of the edges it's some mix between they all come at once and they're coming one at a time. There are a bunch coming, you know, you, there are a bunch coming essentially in parallel, right? One actually happens before the other up to some resolution, but there are different parts of the graph and they really didn't matter. So, so sometimes you'll get a bunch of things that happen, you, you could have gone this way or this way, and uh, you know, which, and you happen to join both about the same time. Um, it's hard to model the difference in these things. Does that answer kind of what you're asking? So, I mean, if you're trying to uh, qualitatively judge uh, when two links came in, which might be more important, yeah. How do you do that? Which is more important? Yeah. So that which is so I'll talk about importance of links in a, in a few minutes. But I'm not saying which is more important. I'm saying which one is likely to actually happen. I'm saying I'm I'm here and I think this guy is going to add a friend in the graph. I just have a feeling. Okay, he's he's looking for a friend and he's gonna either choose there are two things, you might choose this guy or this guy. Right? Um so which one is he more likely to choke? Which one is he more likely to have a friend? And he's only going to choose one. I mean, he could possibly choose both. That's also possible. Yeah, but on what basis does he choose? That's, that's where the importance comes in. Yeah, so no one really knows why people become friends on the graph. They develop these models and theories and try and back them up with data. And one is that this preferential attachment idea, which is that you're more likely to join a friend who you have a common, a new person who you have a common friend with, right? Um, if you look at, um, so it, it, a different way of viewing it is, if, if, you're, if you're this person in the graph, it's more likely that two of your friends will become um, friends with, with each other than two random nodes, either these or these are gonna become friends, that don't have a common friend. It's more likely you're going to join someone who you have, you're going to become friends with someone through someone you know than joining a random person, than than meeting someone random. It's it's hard to meet people randomly. I guess you could do like chat roulette or something, but you know that, that has its own problems. Um, so as, so so th th that's kind of where this this idea comes from. Uh, does that make sense? Um, all right. So so what were we? Um, okay, so let me ask you about um, these other questions here. Okay, so, uh, so this diameter. So, so as, as graphs get larger, or in particularly, if you look at a certain graph over time, say the Facebook graph or the graph of all, if you look at who's written papers with each other together. Right. So, so, uh, so this is the graph of, of citations. Um, which do you think that the 
on diameter is going to get longer over time or is it going to get shorter over time. So you're adding both nodes and you're adding edges. Okay, so who thinks it's going to get longer? Who thinks it's going to get shorter? All right, uh, let's try this again. <laughs> uh, so so um, who, who thinks it's going to get longer? And who thinks it's going to get shorter? Okay, I'd say it's about 50-50. Okay, so, 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 so you want to make an argument for it, it getting longer? Well, you're adding more, so here's an argument. You're, you're, you're adding more nodes over time, and whenever you add a node, you're, you know, you're probably not going to link to too many people. Right? You're getting more different crowds. You're getting more, if you're getting, a, if Facebook is growing around the world, when you open Facebook in a new country, they're more likely going to link to each other and you're going to have to get an extra hop in order to get to all the people in that new country. Okay, so, so that's made an argument that's getting longer. Um, what's, who wants to make an argument for it getting shorter? So it's saying that uh, after nine person, you will know anyone else in the world. Right, so it's saying that. So, um, right, so, so what the small diameter is saying is what's called as a um, small world phenomenon. Right, so have you heard of like, this, you heard of this or like six degrees of separation or seven degrees of separation? Um, so, this is where you know someone who knows someone else and all the way, so you can, you can uh, you're friends with, with everyone within seven hops. Right. Um, so there's this study where where people were given these. Uh, so this is how people used to do research on graphs. They they gave a bunch of people these these uh, these letters and said, I want you to get this letter to someone you know someone's name in um, you know so someone who who, um, um, who has some uh, um, unique name, but you have to give it to a friend of yours who would then send it to a friend. And they looked at, at how many times this would, how long this would take. And usually it would only take about, you know, uh, like seven hops. So this was like the seven degrees of separation. You could always get a letter to someone with only seven hops. And this was just, you know, um, a fairly ad hoc way of doing it. They didn't know the full graph. So they weren't doing the optimal thing. They were just kind of guessing. Um, so, you know, th that would argue that if the, if the, um, if you can always get the letter from one person to another in seven hops, then this can't really be getting longer because with five billion people, we're already we're only at seven. But uh, one example is you have a cluster of people that's the U.S. cluster of people that's Russia, like people on Facebook. Now the Russians would be more connected, the U.S. would be more connected, and you'd have some person from U.S. and Russia connected. Now you have a diameter. Now if you have more people joining and connecting in the US, your long diameter is still going to be, I think, like the Russian connection. So adding more nodes would still keep the diameter as it was before, even with nodes connected. So is that an argument that it'd be short? Yeah. That it would get short, right? Um, so that's the case. So, so actually, as the as graphs grow over time, the uh, um, the diameter of the graph tends to get shorter. So there have been studies of like of like the um, citation graph between authors, and it used to be it used to be around ten, and now it's down to around five. This was in the last I think over the last twenty years. So they they track the history of the paper group again. Um, so and, and this is also true, you know. It's, Generally, of uh, um, the graph on the web, it's it's gotten smaller. It's not as small as as five and link between all web pages, but it's it's not that big. Um, so th this is actually, you know, before you saw really large graphs, this was very unintuitive, right? That that the that the diameter would actually go down. Um, so or at least would hold steady. It thought that as graphs would grow, you know, because what happened is people would, would every graph they studied in this time, they would always draw them. And if you draw a graph on the plane, you can't fit in too many edges. 
right? So that once it got so bad, you couldn't really figure out draw the edges. They say, yeah, let's not look at graphs bigger than this just because we can't draw them. But when you, when you have to have these edges, graphs become a lot more connected, a lot quicker. So, um, so this diameter actually um, can slightly shrink or hold steady over time. Um, okay, so, um, so, um, so how about this question? So uh, I kind of mentioned this at the end of class on Monday, so we'll see who's paying attention. But um, so is the right model for these size um, the number of edges, is it going to be some constant times the number of vertices? This means that the graph is very sparse. That means, on average, people have no more than 100 friends on Facebook. Right? So there's some constant such that this is about. Or is it that, that there's, it's growing in some way polynomially? So, so in, in this case, it's C is going to be less than 1, right? So C will be something that is, is, is greater than 0 and you know, it's probably going to be less than 1, right? So some constant that's greater than 0. OK, so, so, so who thinks it's, it's like this, that there's a fixed average degree? And who thinks that it's, uh, it's, um, that it's growing on over there? OK, so right, let's try this again. And <laughs> so you guys are, are getting worse and worse at voting. <laughs> so, all right, OK, so, so who thinks it's a fixed average degree? And who thinks that it's growing on over? OK, so it looks like maybe 2 thirds here and, and 1 third at the top. So. Yes, I did, but not everyone was paying attention, um, <laughs> apparently. Uh, so, so, uh, um, so this is the right answer. So, so it's, it's actually growing um, slightly polynomial. So the C is sometimes small. So this, these are hard to measure on small graphs. You need a lot of size to, to do this. But C is typically in actually, um, say, 0 0.08 up to, up to 0 0.5. So in strange cases, they actually get pretty dense. Now, this is still going to be much less, um, much less than the fully connected graph. Right? It's still fairly sparse. But it's not, there's not this, uh, this is not a good relationship. And so how do you measure this? For every, you know, for every exponent here, there exists some constant which it holds for. What they do is they look at how these graphs change over time. They look at the web graph or the Facebook graph, and they see how this changes over time. And people keep adding more people, more friends on Facebook faster than either the delete edges or new people come on without adding edges or bringing the average down. It's more likely that people are going to, to, uh, to add new friends than, than you're going to actually um, get new people who, who, who are not adding friends, friends fast enough. So, so, so this is actually growing. Uh, um, in a way that's polynomial. Okay. Um, uh, what's one more property? Uh, so, so what is the um, the degree distribution? Okay. So, um, um, so what does this mean? So it means that if you looked at a plot where this is the um, number of nodes, or the, this is the let's see, um, this is the degree of a node, and this is the number of nodes, right? So um, so the degree equals the um, number of edges that um, contain this node, right? So, so, so this edge has a degree of 3, this edge has a degree of 2, this one a degree of 1, okay? So, so let's look at this distribution. 
And so um, the, there are different ways that this could be. Um, so it, it could either um, um, go down um, so it can be um, exponentially um, decreased. So, so it's decreasing exponentially. So that means you could probably chop off some degree someplace. Um, 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 polynomially um, decreasing, where you, you can write, um, so like, what would be the, the so the, let's write, f is going to be a function of, um, a function of the degree equals x. And so that would be the height here. And in this case, it would be um, something like does that make sense? Okay. And then the green one would be. Okay, so, 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 um, so let me not, um, so I'm not trying to write this cleanly. Okay, uh, so, um, um, so since I don't know how to write this cleanly, I'm not going to give you a test. But, but the degrees of the, of the, of the nodes tend to um, um, decrease polynomial. Right, so you don't have this quick drop off. There are actually a larger, like it's not, so if you have the, the, the degree decreasing exponentially, it means that you only really need to consider uh, nodes up to a certain degree, say, say I'll, care, I'll classify everyone who has Facebook, um, who has 200 Facebook friends or less in one way, and then there's only a small number of people who have more than that, so I can treat them 